In this next section, we're going to look at trigonomic functions at any angle. So if you go back to our last few videos, you notice that we focus on right triangle trigonometry. So where our triangles um, formed right angles and the other angles, because of that, were less than 90 degrees. So we had all these acute triangles that we were focusing on. So we're trying to say now, um, and that kind of looks something like this, right? If we're looking at it more in the plane, um, you can see that you have a little right triangle here. This would be our angle, um, which is definitely less than 90 degrees rotation. Well, what if we had something that goes into a different quadrant, maybe the quadrant two, here I showed you quadrant three or even quadrant four. How do we deal with something like that? Um, and we actually can expand our definitions to include those other kinds of angles. So here you have an angle that goes all the way around into quadrant three, so it's over 180 degrees. Um, you can see you still have this little triangle idea, um, although it's a little bit different, right, because you are in the negative part of the graph here, so that does get incorporated. Um, but we can apply very similar ratios that we did in the last section. So here's our definition. Let theta be any angle in standard position. So remember, standard position means that you're really centered at the origin here, and your angle starts on the positive x-axis. And let P be a point x, y on the terminal side of theta. So any point here along that terminal side, doesn't matter how far out it goes, uh, because again, we're using ratio so that the length of that ray is, is really not important. Uh, we can find R. Uh, basically, it's just a, a radius here as well um, by taking the square root of x squared plus y squared. And this formula is really derived from the Pythagorean theorem. Um, if you see it here, right, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So we're actually just using the Pythagorean theorem there to get that. Um, and it gives us the distance from 0, 0, the origin, to that point x, y, which really is would be like a radius there if we were to end our circle at that point. Um, and it gives us our six trigonometric functions. So they do work very, very similar. So here, your sine theta would be your y value over r. Um, r is acting like the hypotenuse here. Cosine would be your x value over r. Tangent is still the ratio of sine to cosine, so that's why you see y over x. And then you do have those reciprocal functions. So remember, this would be the reciprocal of sine, which is why you have r over y. This is the reciprocal of cosine, r over x. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, um, x over y. And in each case, remember, your denominator can never be zero, of course, or it will be undefined. Um, your r should never be zero because r would be a point on the ray. It should not be the origin or else you don't have a ray. You just have a single point. Um, so that's why you don't see the r labeled as greater than um, or not equal to zero because it should always be greater than zero. All right, so let's do an example. All right, so we're going to let uh, P be the point negative 3, negative 5. Um, uh, let's see, be a point on the terminal side of theta. And we want to find each of the six trig functions. of theta. Now, you don't need a picture here, but you can if it helps you to. Um, so I'm just going to kind of do a very rough picture. So negative 3, negative 5. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that point is about right here. Okay, so what's happening here is that your angle is going from here all the way around. Sorry, you can't see that. So that's your theta. Um, and again, here's my point. That would be the point negative three, negative five. I just drew it in. Again, I'm just drawing a rough picture to get an idea here. <clears throat> and of course, in this case, your X value is negative three and your Y value is five. So the first thing you do want to find is you do want to find the R because you're going to need it. So R is the square root of X squared plus Y squared. So negative three squared plus negative five squared. Now those negatives do get squared here. So it's gonna be positive nine plus 25. So the square root of 34. And then we're just gonna follow formulas. So sine of theta 
is y over r. Our y value is negative 5. Our r is root 34. You do have to do some rationalizing here. So negative 5 root 34 over 34 for our sine value. For our cosine, we're doing x over r. Our x value is negative 3. And again, I have to rationalize this. I'm going to do it the same way, multiplying by root 34 over 4. Um, and I get negative 3 root 34 over 34 there. For a tangent of theta, you're looking at y over x. So let's see, my y value is negative 5. My x is negative 3. Now our two negatives do cancel, so it's positive 5 thirds. You would still simplify fractions as usual. So keep that in mind. I'm just going to move over here for a little bit extra room. So cosecant is going to be r over y. So it's going to be root 34 over negative 5. Uh, and that's fine. If you want to put the negative out front, you can. Or secant, oops, secant. We're looking at r over x. So root 34 over negative 3. And again, if you want to put that negative out front, you can do that. And then for the last one, we have cotangent of theta, which is x over y. So we have, let's see, negative 3 over negative 5, which is 3 fifths. Okay. So we can see, we can find them very much um, similarly here to how we have done before in the past when we've had angles that are smaller, less than 90 degrees. So they still work very, very similarly. I do want to do another example here. So we're gonna evaluate, if possible, the sine and tangent function. At the following quadrantal angles. And remember, a quadrantal angle just means that the terminal side lies on one of the axes instead of within the quadrant. So for A, we're going to look at, let's see, theta equals zero degrees or zero radians. Now, you may want to draw a picture here for these just to get an idea of what's going on. So if you think about it, if you're at zero degrees, so you're starting on the x-axis, um, and you're not moving anywhere, you're kind of staying on that same ray. So you haven't gone anywhere. Um, now to answer this question, remember he can be any value on the terminal, any point on the terminal side. So I'm just going to choose this point right here and I'm going to let that be the point one zero. It doesn't matter which point it is. I could choose five zero. I could choose 10 zero. It doesn't matter. So any point on that terminal side, um, can be your peak. So I want to find my sine of zero degrees. And if I go back to my page before I look at the formula, it was y over r. And I also want to find my tangent of zero degrees. And then again, if I go back to the page before, just to look, it's y over x. So I do need to find my r here first. So if I use this point, my r is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. So my x is 1, my y is 0. So I can just get the square root of 1, which is 1. And that means that my sign is going to be, well, my y value is 0, so 0 over 1, which is 0. And then my tangent is um, 0 over x, which is also 0. So for this particular problem here, my sine value is 0 and my tangent value is 0. Let's try theta equals 90 degrees or pi over 2. So my terminal side starts here and I'm going up to 90 degrees. So this is my angle. And I can let P be any point. So again, just to kind of keep it easy, I'm going to use 0, 1. 
And I'm gonna do the same values here. So sine of 90 degrees or pi over two is y over r. And then tangent of 90 degrees or pi over two is y over x. Now you do have to find the r again here, but because I'm using the same values, it's gonna end up being the same answer. Zero squared plus one squared ends up just being square root of one. Now my y value here is one. So one over one is equal to one. And then here I have one over zero, which doesn't work. So this one is undefined. So tangent of 90 degrees, remember, is undefined. We can do 180 degrees. It's gonna be very, very similar. So you're starting here, and remember 180 degrees brings you right over here. And I can choose any point I want. Um, so negative one, zero. So sine of 180 degrees is y over r. And again, you're still finding r here. Negative one squared plus zero squared is still the square root of one. My y value um, is zero. So zero over one is zero. And then your tangent is your y over x. So zero over negative one, which again is zero. Now I chose negative one zero, but it really doesn't matter. You know, if I chose a different point, uh, let's say I chose something farther out, I chose negative two zero, watch what happens, right? So in that case, my R is going to be negative two squared plus zero squared. So square root of, um, let's see, four, which is two. And my sine of 180 degrees is Y over R. Now my Y value is zero. R is two, and I still get zero for an answer there. And when I do tangent, my y over x, zero over negative two is still zero. So again, it doesn't matter where that point lies on the ray. You can use whatever is given, or if you're doing it on your own, you're drawing your own picture, just choose something easy. Um, so we tend to like the ones a lot. They tend to be easy, just thinking about that unit circle. And then also, let's say you have 270 degrees um, instead here, which is three pi over two. <clears throat> so again, you're starting here and now you're going down this way, going all the way around there for your theta. And again, I'm just gonna make my life easy and choose the point zero, negative one. So again, you're gonna see that your R value is the square root of one, which is one. Our sine of 270 degrees is Y over R. So negative one over one is negative one here. And then our tangent of 270 degrees is Y over X which is negative one over zero, which again happens to be undefined. Okay, so you can apply, again, these are very, very similar rules. A lot of the stuff that we see with trig functions in the unit circle um, can be very repetitive. It almost gets confusing because all the rules are so similar. Um, we're still really doing that, the idea that we did in the last few videos. We're just using slightly different notation here um, and kind of bringing it back to the plane rather than focusing on just a, a set triangle. Uh, but the processes are very, very similar.